this part three as a continuation of part two, the uh, release from the rear method. The only difference is we're using the Z-Stuff DZ1012 detector with the uh, variable time delay versus in part two we used the Z-Stuff DZ1011 block signal detector with a fixed one second time delay. This part three is a continuation of uh, part two, the release from the rear method. The difference between uh, this part three and part two is we're now using a DZ1012 block signal detector with the adjustable time delay instead of the DZ1011 block signal detector with the fixed one second time delay that we used in part two. And just to review, our stop block is over here on the right between those two red note cards starting here at that red note card and uh, going down here to the second red note card. That is our stop block between these two red note cards. And then over here we have the DZ1012 block signal detector and when it's in the green state uh, that the relay is in the normally open position which means there's no no power to the block and when a train goes in front of it which activates it to the red state the relay will shift to the closed position which will put power to the block which will allow that yellow train to start up and just to review some more recall back in part one we had the detector over on the right at the end of the uh, at the end of the stop section and that's what we think will be the most versatile method for most people to use, which is what we're recommending. That there are some cases, where, and we're calling that delay from the front, what we, what, what we did in part one. Uh, but this release from the rear method that we're showing here, there still may be uses for it. And we wanted, I wanted to show it with the DZ-1012. Now you may be asking, why are, why are we watching this again when we already saw this in part two? Well, our next demonstration will show uh, what we can do with the DZ-1012 detector that we couldn't do with the DZ-1011 de detector. Let's say, for example, we're running a rail bus or some sort of a train that's very short. I don't have a rail bus, but uh, that little yellow engine without the cars on it, let's pretend that's a rail bus. And what we find is we don't get enough of a, a long enough activation of the detector to uh, get the other train out of the block. Now, and that DZ-1012 is set to a two second time delay, so it's operating just about the same as a DZ-1011. That's the shortest time delay I could get on it was two seconds. Now when this train goes past the detector, you can see it sets it red long enough to get that yellow train out of the block. Um, now it went back to green and that means it went back to its normally open position. The block is dead. But here's where we'll run into the problem. What we'll probably see is that yellow engine when it goes in front of the detector, it won't keep the block red long enough to keep that stop block powered long enough to get that train out of the detector. And if I don't turn the power off, we gotta get a collision. So what we've gotta do is increase the time delay on the DZ-1012, uh, which it allows us to do with the variable time delay. I've changed the uh, time delay on the detector to six seconds and what that'll do is that'll hold the block in the red state long enough to keep that it'll hold the detector in the red position long enough that the relay will stay closed long enough to power the block long enough to get that passenger train out of the block if you watch when that yellow engine crosses you can see that thing is staying red for about six seconds it's staying red long enough to get that passenger train out of the block. Now the, uh, the so what this does, with, and we couldn't we couldn't have done this in part two with the DZ 1011 uh, because we couldn't adjust the time delay. But with the adjustable time delay, we can increase it longer, so we can have a short 
train activate the block long enough to get a get the train up get a park train all the way out of the block and the constraint on this is that that delay can't be too long or the block will still be powered when that train gets around there you can see it's just it's just going to back to green uh, as this passenger train pulled into the block in other words watch when the uh, when the yellow engine goes across the block there it went to red and you can see it staying red you know stay red almost till that now there it went to green so it's, it's got to be back to the green position so that it goes so the relay relay goes back to its normally open position and turns the power off to the block the, 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 the bottom line is here using this method with the DZ1012 gives you a little more flexibility over using the DZ1011 like we showed in uh, part two Here we are looking at the uh, information page that supports this video and there's a link to this web page down below in the text. Let's look at the drawing again for the DZ-1012. We discussed this uh, quite a bit in part one and it'll be almost the same in part three except we need to change just uh, one wire. We'll scroll down to figure 2C here and see if we can enlarge that. Uh, yeah, there it shows pretty well. And it's the same in part three and as in part one, except we need to change one wire to change it from a normally closed relay unit to a normally open relay unit. Um, here it is shown as in part one, and the track power down here comes in off this uh, yellow wire into the relay, through the relay, and out the normally closed contact, which is shown as this... Uh, greenish colored wire which is actually a white wire but it goes out through the green wire to the red line which represents the center rail in the stop block so uh in in part one the stop blocks normally powered that is to say it, it, the relay is normally closed but in part three we need it normally open that is to say the the stop block will be normally dead in part three so what we're going to do we just take uh this white wire which is the output essentially and move it from terminal six which is the normally closed contact of the relay up to what's numbered here on this drawing is terminal four and let's move this white wire from terminal six to terminal four which is the uh, normally open uh contact of the relay and that'll change the the unit to the way we need it to operate uh, for part three so it'll it'll with that one wiring change it'll now be a, a normally open unit this uh this block will be dead normally except when a, a train passes in front of the detector remember the detector is not located alongside the block anymore like it's shown here it'll be out on the layout but when the train out on the layout passes in front of it uh, when it actu actuates it to red it'll actually close the contacts which will send power into the stop block and release the train that stopped here as you saw in the demonstration so it, it's counterintuitive in part three with the normally uh open operation because when the block when the color is is red on the on the uh when the color red here on the signal the uh is, is when we're getting power into the stop block in part one it's in, intuitive when the power is when the color is green we're getting power into the stop block we'll spend the uh, last five minutes of this video discussing the logic and also the limits of where we can place a detector relative to the stop block let's take a look at these uh two systems of controlling the trains this sketch here shows my little layout and we're back to what we call delay from the front as we showed in uh, part one of the video where we positioned the uh, block signal detector at the end of the stop block and what we had in that case we had a train in the stop block with the block being red and since it was wired normally closed when it was activated to the red state 
it would go to the open position, the relay would go to the open position, turn the power off to the block which would stop this train, and our second train would be somewhere over here, and for a 10 second time delay, it would be about here before the block would go back to green, which would release this train. Uh, we demonstrated that in part one, and also in part one we demonstrated a 23 second time delay, which made an effective release point about over here. In other words, this train would travel around to approximately here 23 seconds later before the block would change from red back to green and release this train. So with about with an effective uh, t time delay available of up to 55 seconds for this uh, de uh, block signal detector, we could essentially cause a release point any place around this loop. And again, keep in mind, this acts pretty much the same way as if you use read switches. This could be a, a read switch here uh, on a read switch system, a read switch here, uh, and a read switch here at the exit of the block, and this read switch would set the block to red, and this read switch would set the block to green, and we demonstrated that in the uh, V9202 series, uh, which, which an excerpt of which was shown in part two at the end. But uh, the limit here is uh, with this system, with the, let's say we have a real big loop, let's take a look at that. Now, that. now Instead of my little loop, which we were just looking at, here's a big loop. So let's say you're, uh, and here's our stop block. And now we've, now we've, we're doing what we just showed here in part three. We're using the uh, release from the rear method, and the detector is wired, uh, the relay is wired to the normally open contact. So uh, our time delay of 55 seconds would only get us around to here, and maybe we wanted to release the train later, and we can do that using this part three method. I showed two places we could put the detector, but in this case our uh, our train would be stopped here waiting and it would be stopped until the, the second train went all the way around this loop and got to here and when it went in front of the detector, as you just saw in part three, it would set, set the uh, block to red which would, uh, since our, our relay is wired normally open, it would close the relay, put power to the block and allow this train to leave and and likewise we could have it down here this would be another operating point even further down the line which would give you a different effect generally the further you move this detector closer to the stop block going downstream the longer this train's going to sit um, and conversely if you move it back upstream as shown here it's going to it's going to release, it's going to pass in front of this, the, the train that's out on the main line will pass in front of the detector sooner, thus releasing this train sooner. So the net effect is you'll have the, the trains running more of the time, both trains running more of the time. So you can, you can vary this position of the detector to get different effects. And the, the, there's two limits on it. Effects. And the, the, there's two limits on it. The one limit is you, you, it, the detector has to be back to red, uh, excuse me, it has to be back to green in this case before the train that went in front of it gets around to the block. If we put the detector way over here, too close to the block, say for example, uh, if we had it over, I'll just draw it in, if we had it over here, the, the train would go in front of it and it would still be red. Uh, which, which would mean the block would still be plowed, powered when that train got there, so it wouldn't stop the train, it would go right through, so that wouldn't work. We have to have this detector far enough back, that is to say far enough upstream, that the, uh, the thing is timed out and gone back to green, so the power is turned off in the block to stop the train when it gets there. And the other constraint is the, uh, the detector can't be too far upstream, say it was way up here, or in what might happen is the uh, we can't have the detector too far upstream, or the uh, train that's heading for the block would, would miss miss it, so to speak. In other words, when it when this train passes in front of the detector over here for a brief period of time, that block is powered, and that train is the first train's got to be in that block, so it can be there to get the power to pull out. If this is moved too far upstream, the uh, 
train it, the other train may not have gotten to the block yet, so it'll miss its opportunity. By the time it gets there, the detector will have timed out, and the block will have, the block will be back in the depowered state.